ancient biblical prophets wrote about the future. Today, theologians are poring over those scriptures with a firm belief that their prophecies are coming to pass. Journey now into the world of eschatology on Prophecy in the News with author and lecturer J.R. Church. On today's Prophecy in the News, we're going to take a look, an in-depth look, at Revelation chapter 5 one of the most exciting chapters, I think, in all of the Bible. For here we see, in the open hand of God, a seven-sealed scroll. And the one who is worthy, Gary Stearman is here to discuss with me, behold, the Lamb. Mm. This is a very important chapter, uh, not only in the book of Revelation, but also in the entire Bible. It's important to understand what's here. And I'm going to read the first two verses where John writes, And I saw the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And so this sets a very important scene having to do with a character, J.R., that, that go, really takes us through the entire Bible, and that's the Lamb. Now, if you'll notice, John has been admitted into the Holy of Holies of Heaven. He sees God Himself sitting upon the throne. And the only thing He can describe to us about Him is His hand. His hand is open and in it lies a scroll, a seven-sealed scroll. And of course, Gary, the word goes out, who is worthy? And a search is made throughout heaven, throughout earth, throughout hell. No one is found worthy. Uh, the enormity of this occasion, and by the way, it doesn't happen just like that. He doesn't say, who is worthy? Well, Nobody's worthy, so let's get on with it. Right. No, no. A, an extensive amount of time is here to thoroughly search out all of heaven and earth and under the earth, or what we would refer to as hell. And it would seem that this one who speaks, this strong angel, and by the way, the, the word Gabriel means a strong man mm -hmm. or a strong angel. And so some of the commentaries have suggested this is Gabriel. I don't know. But he, he asked the question, who is worthy? Which means that this strong angel himself was not worthy. Well, J.R., given uh, the book of Daniel, which foreshadows the book of Revelation, and Gabriel's interaction with Daniel, that's, that's really not a stretch to think about that. Uh, this search for worthiness is something we should discuss. What exactly does it mean to be worthy? Uh, when you talk about worthy to open a scroll, uh, really I think we're talking about qualified. Uh, no one, after this search is conducted, is found qualified. The result is, in verse 4, John uh, begins to cry. It says in the Greek, I, he wept bitterly. In the King James, and I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Now, yes. in other words, no one had the qualifications. Now, what does it take to, to be qualified to open this book? And actually, as it turns out, there's only one thing that it does take. You have to have been the designated redeemer of planet Earth. But you know, Gary, the angels who stood around the throne, the four living creatures, the cherubim, they were not worthy. And they looked throughout all of heaven. There was not one angel. And beyond the parameters of the throne and the 24 elders stands myriads of myriads of angels, as the Greek puts it. Uh, the King James writes, ten thousands times ten thousands and thousands of thousands. None of them were worthy. Mm -hmm. And then of all who were uh, upon the earth, or who have ever been upon the earth, from Adam to the last one, they find no one, no human, no created being worthy. And interesting that they said they searched under the earth. Yes. Uh, which would be the regions of Hades. Is it possible that the word went out, Lucifer, are you worthy? 
come. Here's a scroll. God is not clenching it. It's an open hand, and the scroll is simply laying there. And Lucifer shrank from even thinking about coming. Right. He who was so filled with pride, I'm going to sit upon that throne. I'm going to have the world worship me. I'm better than God. When it came down to, are you worthy to open the scroll? He didn't even show up. And he's uh, noted for showing up, by the way, in the book of Job, for example. Uh, yeah. One day he appeared before the throne of God and he accused Job to, to God's face. And, and so we know that, that he had traffic there uh, in the throne room of God. And yet, as J.R. just pointed out, nobody in the entire creation was worthy. Yeah. Which, and, and I like to use the word qualified, meaning you have to have done something to be qualified to open this scroll. And then, you know, Gary, the fact that he wept and in the Ethiop Ethiopic version uh, of, the, of this particular book, uh, it says that they all wept. I don't know whether they did or not, but it would not seem unlikely that they did because this was, this was something that really gripped him. Why did he weep? I'm thinking, Gary, that he saw the enormity of the problem. Yeah. Not only was earth under the curse, uh, but even heaven needed to be redeemed. Heaven needed to be reconciled. The angels were not worthy. Um, uh, the one who spoke himself, who is worthy, was not worthy. And when the search was made of heaven and earth and hell, and no one was found worthy, it's the enormity of the problem. But look at the price he paid to be worthy. One of the elders said, the lion of the tribe of Judah, he is worthy. When John looked, he did not see the lion of the tribe of Judah. He saw the lamb of God. Mm -hmm. Only one time is, is Jesus called, in, in the book of Revelation, is he called the lion of Judah. Only uh, twice is he called the root of David. Only twice is he called the morning star. But 28 times he is called the Lamb. And Gary, I think that's the focus. That's the reason why uh, he, that's the reason why he cried. And that's the reason why Jesus is referred to here and throughout the book of Revelation as the Lamb. Let's look at the price he paid for a moment. Well, J.R., he paid uh, the price of all of his blood. And uh, this takes us all the way back to uh, the rescue of the Israelites from Egyptian bondage under Pharaoh who refused to let the people go and uh, combined with ten plagues including the death of the firstborn was the great night of the Passover when the lamb was slain his blood was uh, painted upon the doorposts and lintels of the houses of the Israelites in Egypt they escaped through these plagues and they went out uh, into the desert and J.R. all of that symbolism, now it's, it's, it's real, historic, it's also symbolic. It looks forward to the ultimate mm -hmm. uh, release from bondage of captive Israel in the world system. And we have all of that here in, in Revelation. The price of all of his blood was the price paid by the Lamb of Sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I have written an article on this subject, Revelation chapter 5, for our upcoming magazine, and this is what I wrote. There is none of the worthy enough to take the book. And who is this who alone possesses all the qualifications necessary to redeem both heaven and earth? He is the Lamb. Now, throughout the scriptures, Jesus is referred to by many, many metaphors. He is called Wonderful. He's called Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He is Emmanuel of Isaiah 7, 14. He's the Messiah and the words of Daniel 9, 25. He is Shiloh in the words of the dying Jacob in Genesis 49. He is the sun rising with healing in his wings in Malachi. He is the rock of Israel, the pearl of great price. He is the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. He is the br bridegroom. He's the man of war, the captain of our salvation. He's the root out of dry ground, the tree of life, and the son of God. But I want you to know never, never does the Savior mean so much 
to the redemption of mankind as the Lamb. And in John's Gospel, when he introduces Jesus, after he talks about him being the Word, and the Word was made flesh, and the light, and all of those metaphors, when he comes down to the end of that first chapter, he says, John said he's the Lamb. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's the great Lamb. And that Lamb really runs through the entire Scripture, J.R., from, from Abel's acceptable sacrifice, yeah. uh, the sacrifice that enabled Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to come uh, by, righteously by faith. And, and yeah. J.R., it's a, an amazing story. Yeah. There's more. We'll be back in just a moment. There are 22 chapters in the book of Revelation. Each one of them allude to the meaning of the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. The fifth chapter here is associated with the hay. And uh, this fifth letter shows, it shows up in the fifth chapter of the book of Revelation in a marvelous way. Uh, Gary, let's talk about the meaning of hay, mm -hmm. and then we'll get into this chapter. We are in chapter 5, and the numeral 5 in Hebrew is uh, represented by the letter hay. And I'm reading here from uh, uh, Rabbi Michael Monk describing the letter hay. Uh, and he says the Talmud explains that God used the letters yut and hay uh, to form the divine name, Yah. Uh, we hear Yahweh out of that to create the universe. With the letter yut, he created the world to come. With the letter hey, he created this world. Well, J.R., this is amazing to me because that scroll that's rolled up, held in the hand of God, mm -hmm. has to do with this world, namely the kingdom. Yes. Um, many of the um, scholars in the early part of this century discussed this scroll as being the title deed to the earth. And I think that uh, very succinctly puts it. Uh, you recall the book of Ruth. Uh, Naomi lost her land. In order to get it back, she needed a kinsman redeemer. Boaz, with that kinsman redeemer, bought back the land for her. No land can be sold forever. And it's, it's a, a metaphor of the bigger picture of planet Earth, lost by the, by the sin of Adam, uh, the fall of Adam, uh, what uh, uh, Lucifer had, uh, had ruined and uh, or had spoiled and uh, Adam had lost, mm -hmm. took the lamb to redeem. So this is the title deed to the earth. Now, let's look at the hay for just a moment. You, you said that with the yot, God created the world to come. With the hay, he created this world. So in the hand of God, we have both the yot and the hay. Yes, we do. <laughs> for the first time after 66 books, the the yote, the metaphysical unseen hand of God, is seen. And this, this is most important here because uh, right in verse 1 he says, And I saw in the right hand of him the book. So he saw in the yote the hay. The hay stood for the book. The yes. yote stood for the, uh, for the, the hand. letter. The, the Hebrew word, by the way, for, for hand is yat, spelled yot dalet. So it's not a stretch to talk about the hand here holding the scroll, which is the hay, that is, this created world, and then by extension, only one being is qualified to open this book. We know him to be the one who created the world. Not only that, we know that Adam sold himself into slavery, and the second Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ, redeemed man from slavery. He's the Redeemer, the price of His blood. And therefore, we have this whole picture coming full open. Yeah. We have the yot, the hay, the vav, and the hay. The yot, hay, was the creation by the hand of God mm -hmm. of heaven and earth. Yes. And then the vav, the Redeemer, redeems the hay of the creation. All of which may sound terrifically complex, <laughs> and you need to read the article. By the way, these uh, uh, these little complexities are, are spelled out in detail uh, in uh, J.R.'s article in uh, the, the, pro the current prophecy in the news. J.R., when we get to the idea of redemption, this is key because this idea of opening the book is intimately tied to the idea of redemption, which is a hidden idea, particularly to national Israel right now. It just can't see 
the redemption. It thinks in terms of repentance, not redemption. Yeah. And that God is kind to the repentant. Right. But what we see is that he redeems the repentant. Right. And um, so we have here two hays. Yot, hay, vav, hay. And Gary, to me, the hay represents this world from beginning to end, the first hay to the last hay. And so in uh, Genesis 2-4, after the Lord uh, rests on the mm -hmm. Sabbath, on the seventh day after creation, the very next verse says he picks up the little hay and it begins then, it's a time marker, begins this world, right. the human race and the history of the human race. And then the big hay found in Deuteronomy 32.6 represents the conclusion of all of history. And the Vav, the Redeemer in between, saves every repentant soul from the first to the last. That's what the two hays, I think, represent. Therefore, the divine name is a symbol of the redemption of humanity. Uh, verse 9 of chapter 5 says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation. And so, uh, the 24 elders, the assembled group, sing a new song. We need to say a few words about the new song. Uh, which, by the way, goes right back to the meaning of hay. Uh, Rabbi Monk, in his dissertation on the meaning of hay, the wisdom of the Hebrew alphabet, says that there are two new songs. One new song is a song that they sing at Passover um, because it means the work is yet unfinished. And so they use the feminine form of the term shara kadisha mm -hmm. with the hay at the end of each one of those words. There's the two hays in the name of God. But the hay shows the feminine uh, fact that uh, the work is yet unfinished. When, and by the way, in chapter 5 of Revelation, when the scroll is taken by Jesus, he's standing there with the scroll and they sing the new song. It is the Shirach HaDashah because it's not over. He still has to break the seals and judge the earth. In chapter 14 of Revelation, in verse 3, we have the Shir Kadash, the final version, mm -hmm. the masculine form of the hay uh, of that new song. So there are two new songs in the book of Revelation. This one in chapter 5 is the, is the feminine form of, for the hay is added to the new song. But over there, the hay is removed from the new song. It's not Shirah Kadashah, it is Sher Kadash, mm. because the Messianic kingdom has arrived. And quickly, uh, to clarify this just a little bit, if you think we're being uh, uh, perhaps over dramatic about the letter hey or, or emphasizing its importance too much, uh, on the, God's fifth appearance to Abraham, five times, represented by the letter hey, he added a hey to Abram's name, changed his name to Abraham. He added a hey to Sarai's name, changed her name to Sarah. Only then, did they conceive Isaac. Then and only then was the, uh, the royal line able to be continued when he added the hay to their names. And that hay, as we have learned, signifies redemption. Yes. Now, we have the first hay in the name of God. And, and it was all perfect, and God said it was good. But then we have the fall of Adam and the need for a redeemer, the Vav. And he comes and he takes this scroll. This scroll has been sealed. Remember in Daniel chapter 12, God says, seal the scroll. Shut up the book, seal the words until the time of the end. Well, here the, the book is unsealed. And so that which was sealed, and that uh, when, when Adam lost his inheritance, when creation fell through the sin of Adam, we have immediately God's plan set in motion for the redemption of this fallen creation. Mm -hmm. And so when we see the scroll here that is about to be unsealed, we have the, 
the uh, grand finale of God's great plan of redemption. It, it's, a, it's a marvelous story, Gary. And once again, to conclude, uh, we are about to enter into uh, the judgment of the nations, uh, the return of the kingdom to the chosen people, Israel. In other words, we're talking about moving from bondage to freedom here, the freeing of, uh, of the chosen people. And J.R., that's uh, redemption, the redemption of this world. We only have seconds remaining and so much more to say. Uh, you've got to read the complete article in the, the latest edition of Prophecy in the News. Yes, now you've got to understand that Jesus, God of every God, became human to be human forever and bear the scars of Calvary. What a price he paid.